Yo, what is up guys? It's me, Zach Lee, back bringing some more daily NBA news and highlights. Hope you're all having a fantastic day, but with all of that being said, we got a few things to talk about today, so let's not waste too much time. Let's just get into everything that's going on in the NBA. The Memphis Grizzlies are definitely one of those teams in the NBA that has seen better days, as after they got off to a pretty respectable start in the season and were in the middle of the pack in the Western Conference, it has been an absolute horror story ever since then for the Memphis Grizzlies as they have lost 12 of their past 13 games and are in 14th place in the very competitive Western Conference. Now, all of that being said, there is still some hope for the Memphis Grizzlies as they still do have Jaron Jackson Jr., a rookie who may not right now be as great or sensational as a player like Luka Doncic is, but he is still one of the best players in the draft, averaging over 13 points per game while shooting 50% for the field, around the league minimum from beyond the arc, and also being a pretty good defender for a rookie. However, of course, even with Jaron Jackson Jr. having a standout rookie season, the Memphis Grizzlies still haven't been good. So, it would only make sense that we would start seeing reports like this starting to come out, saying that the Memphis Grizzlies are now for the first time open to the idea of trading away their stars, Mike Conley as well as Marc Gasol. However, reports also came out saying that the Memphis Grizzlies are insisting that if any team does want to trade for Mike Conley or Marc Gasol, that they're also going to have to trade for Chandler Parsons as well, which could make things very difficult because Mike Conley or Mark Gasol on their own, yeah, I can definitely see some team being willing to trade for a player like that. However, you throw Chandler Parsons and his contract into the mix, then it becomes much murkier waters. James Harden just spoke up on the Carmelo Anthony situation for the first time since Carmelo Anthony was traded from the Houston Rockets to the Chicago Bulls. As James Harden says that it sucks that Carmelo Anthony did not work out as a member of the Houston Rockets, and he also gave Carmelo Anthony the title of one of the best players to ever play the game of basketball. Melo is one of the best to ever hoop. He loves the game of basketball. Some guys just do it because they're gifted or athletic or because they can shoot the basketball. There's not many players like that that love to hoop. It kind of sucks that it didn't work out. It is what it is. I just hope he can find somewhere where they can embrace him and he can still hoop. So he gets to make the decision when he's done playing. Now, since Carmelo Anthony was traded from the Houston Rockets to the Chicago Bulls, we have gotten numerous reports out of the Los Angeles Lakers being one of the teams that will have interest in Carmelo Anthony when he does hit free agency after he is bought out from the Chicago Bulls. However, those same reports also said that the Los Angeles Lakers don't really want to make room for Carmelo Anthony on their team. They don't want to free up a roster spot that's already taken just for Carmelo. Carmelo Anthony. So maybe the only way Carmelo Anthony does end up on the Los Angeles Lakers is if the Lakers make some other type of trade before the trade deadline. And in that trade, another roster spot becomes available. So it is definitely possible and there's been a lot of chatter surrounding Carmelo Anthony to the Los Angeles Lakers. Shaquille O'Neal even believes that Carmelo Anthony will end up on the Los Angeles Lakers. For me personally, I can see LA, I can also see Miami, and maybe, maybe, maybe Portland if they become desperate enough. The Sacramento Kings have unanimously had one of the worst NBA front offices in league history for a while now. This is just an undisputed fact of the NBA. The Sacramento Kings front office isn't the best. However, even though it's still not the best right now, it's still been a lot better than it has been in the past. As in the past, high up executives for the Sacramento Kings were literally stealing money from the organization. As reports came out this evening saying that former Sacramento Kings executive Jeffrey R. David pled guilty in a multi-million dollar fraud scheme. Jeffrey R. David, the former Sacramento Kings executive who schemed to steal 13.4 million from the franchise and sponsors to snatch up exclusive beachfront properties, pled guilty Tuesday to two counts of wire fraud and aggravated identity theft in Sacramento Sacramento Federal Court. David admitted directing companies to wire money to the limited liability corporation he formed, Sacramento Sports Partners. One sent more than $4 million to the sham account while he was the franchise's chief revenue officer. He admitted to forging the signatures of corporate officials using funds to pay off American Express bill and paying $100,000 to a private jet company. Alright guys, look, just because someone has a nice paycheck, just because someone makes a lot of money doesn't necessarily mean that they're wealthy, that they're rich. There are a lot of people that make a lot of money who still end up broke. There are a lot of people that make tens of thousands, fifty thousand, hundred thousand dollars every single month, and yet they still find themselves living paycheck to paycheck because 
they're stupid and then they find themselves in a position like this guy where they try and steal from the place they work for in order to pay off their debts or to buy more things that they can't truly afford anyways the sentencing for jeffrey r david hasn't quite taken place yet but he's apparently facing a maximum sentence of 20 years in federal prison for wire fraud and another two years for id theft as well as a five hundred thousand dollar fine now though with all of the news out of the way it's time that we take a quick look at the games from last night devin booker and gorgie dang got into a little bit in the third quarter in this one is after Gorgi Dang and Devin Booker both crashed the glass for a rebound in the third quarter, Dang called Booker with an elbow, and Booker let him know that he didn't necessarily appreciate that. And now nothing really happened altercation wise, but both players were eventually ejected from the game for this. And that is when Gorgi Dang told Devin Booker to meet him in the hallways, and Devin Booker looked more than happy to oblige. However, like always, nothing truly happened after the game in the hallways. Gorgi Dang did take a shot at Devin Booker after the game though saying he talked to me i talked to him back i think he tried to hit me everybody could see i didn't throw a punch in this league there are a lot of guys that think they're tough and they're not devin booker on the other hand dipped out before the media had a chance to even talk to him and considering how this game as a whole went i don't necessarily blame him as the wolves got the easy 118 to 91 win towns with 25 points 18 rebounds and 7 assists while Josh Okoge also played well with 21. The Portland Trailblazers and the OKC Thunder played what could be a very key game in determining the standings of the Western Conference this season. Both of these teams entering this game with nearly identical records. That being said, it was the Thunder who eventually came out on top as Paul George and his 36 points as well as Russell Westbrook and his 29 points, 14 assists and 10 rebounds were enough for OKC to land the 123-114 to win over Portland. Kawhi Leonard continues to sit out for the Toronto Raptors under quote unquote load management and the Raptors still get the 120 to 105 win over the Sacramento King. Kyle Lowry and Fred Van Vliet scoring 19 points each. Kyle Lowry also having 9 assists while Van Vliet added 7 rebounds and 7 assists and the Raptors are now 11 and 2 even when Kawhi doesn't play. Dennis Smith Jr. finally returned to the Dallas Mavericks lineup in this game after sitting out his last 6 games for various reasons. Who knows if the Mavericks are still trying to trade him though I'd imagine so and him being on the court and playing will only help his trade value I'd imagine as teams will be a lot less willing to trade for a player that they couldn't actually see play. Dallas though did get the win in this one over the Clippers 106 to 98. Donchus and Smith scoring 17 points each. And that is going to do it for everything that we got to talk about today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did then go ahead and destroy that like button to show you continued support for the series. And also make sure that you are subscribed to the channel with post notifications turned on so you can stay up to date with everything that goes on in the NBA on a daily basis also don't forget to vote for the player of the day by clicking the little eye icon at the top right hand corner of the video just remember though that only players whose team won are eligible to win player of the day and yesterday you guys selected clay thompson and his 44 points including hitting 10 of his 11 three-point attempts in the warriors blow win over the los angeles lakers thank you once again for watching though you guys already know that you are the real mvps and until tomorrow i am out of here peace